I tell you what. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21, Blackjack, baby. It sounds like our adventurers are getting a little stir crazy in town and they're ready to hit the road. So all I ask before starting is you, beautiful listeners. Remember, all of our socials are in the notes. Any comments, any downloads, any follows, it would be amazing. We'll follow you back. Everyone wins. It's great. You know how we do. We get right into it with a quick recap from Travington. <laughs> Throwback. Well, after circle jerking each other um, and reminiscing about the wonderful things we did last season. I'm still sticky. <laughs> <laughs> and stinky and always wet. Um, <laughs> uh, we revisited the prophecies of each of our characters. So we were able to talk through those sort of uh, more of an internal monologue for each of us, really. Uh, but then getting back to our wonderful adventure. Uh, the, the Heroes of Hayhaven uh, is what we've started to call ourselves. Um, but in an effort to learn about my new boots, my fancy new boots, I tried a bunch of things uh, without much success. <laughs> On our way back to the Sly Fox again, uh, but then we saw them setting up for another celebration. And once we got back to the Sly Fox, we realized we could ask there, and they told us that tomorrow the army would be leaving to go and deal with this hag problem in the forest. that You know, they've noticed all these hags coming through. So they're going to go out and deal with them. So they're going out into the forest, so they're going to have a big celebration party. I guess they like parties in Gwaith. This is a pretty cool place to be. It's like Florida with spring break, like, all the time. <laughs> Quarry and break! Yeah. After returning to the Sly Fox, Gilly introduced us to his cousin, Billy, who was a, an armorer, I guess, in town. We didn't realize, you know, where he was going to go, but he, he said he was going to improve that armor. He's going to increase it. To a full plate, and we could be on a merry way as soon as it comes back in two days. With a half-naked Anders sitting beside me, we decided to get to the the elephant in the room, the the mumbling on his back. So, doing so, he he drew his sword. We met Artie. He seems cool. Make me wet with blood. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> that was, that was pretty much it. Thank you, Travis. Another great intro. So, we left off last episode with Anders finally starting a conversation with Akroma. He's had conversations with Akroma, but he's never started it. I'm not excited. You're excited. So, you're going up to your room, right? And did you sheath Artie? What did you do with Artie? Absolutely. I can't have his brethren waking up all the, the tenants here at the inn. Just promise me that tomorrow you'll unsheath me again! Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Bloody steel. He's, like, really smelly from the poop that you swiped him through. Well, he can stew in it for a night. <laughs> <laughs> See how he likes it. I feel like you guys have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're uh, shit-encrusted uh, has-beens. Yes. We are meant for each other. Indeed. And well, Travis and Crick quickly went to their rooms, and it's just you going to your door. You're opening it up. You enter your room. What is the first thing naked kind of Anders without armor? Well, he's not naked. He's got his undergarments, but you guys get what I'm putting down. Anders crosses the room and takes a piss in the chamber pot. All right, so that takes 25 minutes. Yes. And then uh, he sits on the bed and he clutches that blood amulet. It's around your neck? Indeed. The Okruma amulet. And... Uh, he begins a sort of prayer. Not not what he would say is a prayer, but, you know, he's he's thinking it. Is it the same kind of prayer young Anders would do, or is it a modified prayer? No, it's it, his internal monologue, as it were, just his thoughts. And he's thinking of Okramon, trying to summon him to have a meeting, a discussion. So you want to enter a deep meditation, clutching your pendant and seeing if Okrama will come to you. I know you're there, you bastard. You have a lot to answer for. Meet me. Don't be a coward. Speak plain. So you breathe and you try to enter a dark meditative state. And you're calling for a chroma. And one minute goes by. Five minutes goes by. You start to feel a little tingly. Like not gnome finger tingly. But more of like a spiritual tingleness. I thought I was immune to that goddamn... <laughs> <laughs> That's up to Okroma. <laughs> the pendant starts to feel warm in your hand. And you feel like you're not the only one in that room. Uh, you're here, aren't you? I feel you. 
He's not talking, but you know he's there. You feel a presence. It's Akroma is a god from a different realm. The only time he's ever talked to you was when you were in deep, deep sleep. So, nothing to say for yourself, huh? Kit got your tongue, is that it? You bloody twat. Meet me. We may yet cooperate. I have some things I need done. Some things you need to answer for. Things I need to answer for. It's the only chance for the both of us. You need me. And much as I hate to say it, I need you. So for once, answer the call. Do what's right. Because he could say the same for me. If you won't speak with words, then speak with actions. Show me you are there. When I call upon you in combat, or any other such need, such dire need, to protect my allies, or to protect myself, you be there, and we'll see. We'll see where we can go. But make no mistake, you leave me high and dry one more time. We're through, full and done. I don't care if I have to climb the tallest mountain in the world to get close enough to the clouds to find your godly throne and sever... Whatever connects you to this existence, mark my words, I'll see through, all the way through to the end. So let's have a, an accord, if you will. Mutually beneficial agreement. Friends with benefits? A marriage of, <laughs> Yes. A marriage of convenience. I thought that was pretty good. I felt him there. Yeah, you felt a presence. Like a sleep paralysis demon. Yeah, in a sense, yes. But um, the man in the hat, he's spoken to you deep in dreams, but this is not a, a connection that would allow conscious speaking. That's a thing. Have you ever heard of that? Sleep paralysis? The man in the hat. Dude, we'll talk days about the man in the hat. I've That's had sleep fucked. paralysis since I was 16 <laughs> and it got to the point where it was so bad that I had to challenge the man in the hat and charge at him. I've only ever had sleep paralysis once and it definitely was scary. Dude, the covers come off, right? I don't know. It was only, it was only like two or three years ago it happened. Yeah. I just like couldn't breathe. I was just like lying there. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, am I paralyzed? Like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, yeah, you think you're paralyzed. Yeah, and then like 10, 15 seconds later, I was just like... <gasps> yeah. You got to wiggle your fingers and wiggle yeah. your toes. That's how you get out of it. Sorry. It's good. It's Nothing to good. apologize for. So you just finished your prayer. And how do you want to go about your nighttime routine? You feel the presence slowly leave from you. As you say those final words. So how do you proceed with the rest of your night? And is is muttering, you you better show. You better show. And he tucks the amulet back into his uh, undershirt there. And then he walks across the room and takes another piss in the chamber pot. All right. 50 minutes later. (laughs) And then he is ready to go to bed. All right. So you guys all sleep well. It is the morning of the 17th of Gazran, 10th day of the journey. So what is your guys' plan for the day? It's going to be another day for Anders' armor to get finished by Billy. You have a whole day. Do you guys just want to rest, do some R&R, cut your nails, do some laundry? Well, I think a little rest is in order after what we've been through if we have some time off. Yeah, waiting for your armor. I want, maybe I'll check out that celebration. Oh, yeah. See a see a Kimbo off, right? Yeah, it's essentially the city is going to be throwing a little celebration for all the soldiers joining up the army that's going to be battling the hags and the witches. Evil witches. Not all witches are bad. Um, I didn't have anything specific. I was hoping to find out what these boots do. I'm so curious. Well, uh, it's another day, so you guys can try and identify them again. Uh, hi, Craig. What? I have a challenge for you, a riddle. Ooh, interesting. Okay, what about this riddle? What does these boots do? <laughs> That's not a riddle. This more of question than riddle, but uh, let me see. Very poor. I roll very badly. Craig knows that they go on your feet. Does he? <laughs> I believe they go and fit, but I don't know. Eureka! Maybe, maybe, on the head. maybe I know more about the rod, though. So I take a look. Yeah, looking at the rod. It was on natural 20 for mo- one moment, but then switched to even worse roll than uh, for Travis Boots. I put a number two on the dice. 
<laughs> so, wow. he yeah. Dropped, dropped a number two. Yes. So, unfortunately, today you guys still don't know what the rod or the boots do. Kind of want to know what they do. So, uh, as I inquired yesterday, uh, I think with the DM. With Gilly? Oh, yeah. Okay. I did ask Gilly. Okay, You're right. Yeah, before we leave, I'd like to ask Gilly where these uh, places are that might be able to identify something for us. Oh, I got a cousin that knows. Yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, I got to hook up everywhere. Okay, who's your guy? His name's Chili. Yeah. <laughs> he works up north. <laughs> His name's Willie. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, he's another cousin. He works by the waterfall, right? Wet Willie? He's right next door. He knows everything. Ah, I'm surprised we didn't see him all these times. No, it's because he runs his own shop and he doesn't like to drink. I don't let him in here. He doesn't pay anything. He seems like smart men. He Come. just kind of like glares at you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Willie's. Wait, you guys didn't pay. You said we no pay. That was yesterday. Okay, yeah. so we square up Bill with Gilly and move on and go find friend Willie. While we wait for Billy. Indeed. This is getting silly. I want it your tab. Bye. So you guys leave the Sly Fox. And next door, there is a store. And it's called... Willie's Wonder Emporium. <laughs> Willie's Wonderland. Big Willie style. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Great name. It's got a symbol of a question mark on top of it. <laughs> so as you enter Willie's... You see a gnome in the corner in average clothes and travel cloak, and he's reading a book. And he looks at you, and he goes, Hey, I'm a gnome. Hey, gnome. Hey. What's up, Willie? Um, oh, how do you know my name? Oh, we got sent over by Gilly. Oh, Gilly. Yeah, yeah. I don't like him. Yeah, he told us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we wanted to you know, give you a bit of business over here. Oh, I do like business. Oh, okay, so I can tell you in the same family then. Yeah. Yeah, we heard that too. Um, anyway, we... It's a gnome thing. Gnome saying? <laughs> <laughs> Just had to work that in there, didn't you? <laughs> I'm... Felt good. Thank you for making me a part of that. That's great. No, we, we, we heard what you do, and we wanted to enlist your services on some, uh, some special items we got. Yeah, I'm real smart. But there's a chance I don't know what you have. I gotta be honest. Oh, yeah, we, we understand the, the precautions, there, but you can do it more than once a day, so. Yeah, I can try. I got six tries in the bank, but I can't guarantee success. Let's spin that wheel, I guess. I'm curious enough. What do you want me to look at? Uh, he's got a, a rod. Oh, a rod, yeah, rod. I know rods. <laughs> I bet you do. Ah, I like him. <laughs> Here, I show you. Oh, that's a nice rod. Let me just check and see if I know. Oh, I know that rod. Told you I know rods. <laughs> <laughs> you all seem to know a guy. That's called a sapling rod. And it's really expensive. I should let you guys know. Cool, that's very nice. This rod appears to be the limbless trunk and branching roots of a miniature tree. It grants its wielder a plus five competence bonus on survival checks to get along in the wild and to keep from getting lost. Additionally... The wielder and any allies within a 20-foot radius of the wielder gain the benefit of Ranger's Woodland Stride. You can move through difficult terrain yeah. as long as you are proficient in said terrain. At regular movement, so you don't have to spend the half movement. Okay. That's not even the fun stuff. The fun stuff is... If thrust, love the language, into any natural ground or earth and allowed to stand for one hour... The rod grows and blooms into a large tree bearing edible fruit. It can produce 2d4 pieces of fruit. And if you eat that fruit, you get to choose whether it's cure moderate wounds, lesser restoration spell, no cleric group. And also uh, consuming a piece of fruit from the sapling rod is a full round action if you were to do it in combat and provokes attacks of opportunity. Very nice. It's a nice rod. Yes, it's very powerful. I'm very excited. I got five more for the second one. That'll, that'll be ten gold, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that up front. Thank and you. The, next, the next ten gold up front. I'm starting to get a little sketched out by you guys. <laughs> sure, I pay. No problem. You are Gilly's friends. He's a bit much, isn't he? He is a lot. <laughs> 
said that about the last one yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he was born extra. Then next, I would like to move on to my footwear. Oh, nice boots. Yeah, these kicks. I got, I got them here. Okay, let me see. Gaba, 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 gaba. I have no idea what those boots are. <laughs> Nobody seems to. They must be the most powerful boots I've ever seen. I can try four more times, but that's ten gold to try. Okay, yeah, here's, uh, here's the next ten already. All right, minus thirty gold total. Ba 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 ba. I have no idea what those boots are. Still, I'm sorry. I felt I was close on that one, but I haven't been rolling very well, to be honest. <laughs> sure you will, you blooded charlatan. We have a we have a. Anders, my, he's so my okay. leader. He's trying to help us. My my leader is a wizard friend. Can he help in any way? I don't know if you can aid on that. Can you? No. He's trying to help his coin purse. Is what he's doing. Eh, it's okay. I, I, I want to find out what these boots are, man. That's more of a gilly thing. I got two more tries if you want. Yeah, let's uh, let's finish them up for the day. All right. I have no idea what those boots are, and I'm not going to lie. That was the worst roll out of all of them. I got one more try if you want. If not, I understand. I'm not even going to say. You know what? I'll tell you what, guys. You guys have paid a lot. I'm going to give you this next roll for free. That's truly Big Willie style. Okay, I I had a feeling on the last four, but this last conjuring really made me realize that these are in fact the boots of speed. <gasps> oh, yeah, cool. You got to click them together to make them work. Oh, okay. Yeah. I never got to do my leprechaun leap. And yeah, just no, figure it out by no, accident. they're not. Okay. They're not jumping ones. Okay, no. No, they're uh, they're for running. I like jumping. Yeah, and also you you feel kind of like you're all jacked up on like cat or something, and you can attack twice and stuff. Wow, you get two attacks now? I only when so. I'm hasted. Only when you're hasted. It's only a couple rounds, and then you burn out, kind of like the cat as well. How many times <laughs> is that one a day? I'm just gonna have to look this up online, and I'll tell you how many times a day. Ten times well, a day? We'll, we'll no, see. No, we'll no, see. We'll no, see. no, 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 no. Your DM changing. never said ten times a day. Okay, <laughs> let's all calm down for a minute. While the haste is active, you move faster and get your extra attack. You can do that for five rounds a day, and you can choose which rounds you want. It's very powerful boots. Wow. Excellent work. Some Thank boots are better, but these ones are quite nice. These boots are made for walking, I believe. That's just what they'll do. Mm -hmm. I'm really into this book, though, guys. If you want to just, you know, leave my store now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a jerk. What, is, what is he selling? One. I'm selling information, basically on items. Hmm. Did you see the question mark sign on the on the outside? I did, yes. Yeah, sometimes I don't even know what that means. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should sell this. I don't know. I can only prepare six one-level spells, and I choose <laughs> Identify every day. Well, thank you very much. No, this is no, very no, helpful. No, thank you, and especially thank you for leaving in such a hastily manner. I really I really appreciate that. <laughs> I click my heels and boot it out of there. <laughs> uh, You're just like the Flash. <laughs> yeah. And his tends to the gnome and says, Hey, small man, identify this. And he gives him the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. That's the biggest finger on a human's hand. <laughs> this is a good identifier. Yes, yeah, you are yeah, correct. I, I felt that. You can stay, actually. I just want the other guys to leave. Oh, well, thank you. But yeah. I, I, I bet for take care oh, of I them, too. There is a celebration happening, I understand. <laughs> I, I prefer the books. Will you be joining Celebration? No, no, oh, no. At okay. the outside, it gives me anxiety. Hmm. <laughs> well, be careful of the coming doom, okay? Oh, Bye. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's get up. That's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> We're, I already left. Yeah, Andrew's left. He's already gone. I was the fastest at the door. Yeah. Yeah. So, I Travis. I used one yeah. round of haste. Travis is now in Trader's Haven. <laughs> <laughs> And Anders, I'd like you to roll a will save, please. Uh oh. Boots of accidental teleport. Ooh, a fatty natty. Oh, oh my gosh. This is a will as well. Automatic so that's 25. Save. At 25, you feel like something was invasive in your consciousness for a second and then disappeared. And it was not a chroma. Was it a gnome finger probing my mind? You did not feel any gnome fingers. Hmm. Curious feeling. Uh, is there anything I can do to 
investigate this further. This isn't a perception. This isn't anything. You can, can do it? a perception check to look around. Ah, yeah, okay. And is, uh, does a perception check of his immediate environs to uh, see if there's some sort of threat to magics. 18. You see the city kind of setting up and putting delineators down, making a path to the gates, and people getting the first spot in what would be like maybe a parade that's starting from the inner Dragon Bailey all the way out to the door. So there's a lot of people around, and you don't see anything that would tell you that someone's trying to rape my mind. Uh, Crick, if uh, you don't mind. Um, what is it? I'm having a pretty strange feels up not in my face but inside my face <laughs> and Crick immediately walks up to Anders and puts his hands on both sides of his face and kind of starts feeling around a little bit oh, this is very strange you would keep describing go ahead I, I, I probe with my fingers well it's kind of <laughs> like when a gnome sticks his finger into you know he's probing you but in your brain except it's not it can't be a gnome in my brain so, so Crick pulls his right hand off the side of your face and then with his like index finger just like hard taps you in the forehead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wish to make perception check. Okay. On Anders or the surroundings? Around. 20. Yeah, with a 20, you don't see anyone like staring around a corner or anything. You just see citizens preparing to send soldiers off to a battle. Okay, may I, can I do a, some sort of knowledge check to understand what's I'd going like on? I'd like to do a perception just on Anders. Mm -hmm. Myself. <laughs> Nine. Yeah, he, he looks fine. Okay. He just looks a little confused, and uh, yeah. And you can do a knowledge arcana to maybe think of some things that might affect the mind. Oh, I have that. Very good roll. Uh, 27. I don't need to bother. <laughs> well, you don't know that he rolled a 27. Okay. The ideas of the rolls are that it's what your character believes and knows. 10. So with a 10, you're just like, ah, oh, my head hurts. I don't know why. With a 27, Crick knows that mind-affecting spells, even if you fight them off, you still feel like something happened. So it must have been that someone or something was trying to do something to Anders' head, and he successfully fought it off. Anders, you must keep defending your brain from these attacks. I believe somebody's trying to cause harm. I don't know who. Maybe this was the uh, bounty. They are coming for us. Steal yourself. And my brain? This is a possibility. I don't know for sure. Well, that's rather concerning. Uh, Just keep being strong. I'll do my best. I'll, I'll try to... Not trying. Do your best. I'll let you know if uh, anything's a, a matter. Good, good. If it happens again, you say right away. Is anything affecting Audi? Oh, the sword. Uh, should I pull him up? Well, I don't know. If, if something's affecting your brain, I mean, you're, you're pretty close. and He seems to have some sort of brain in there. <laughs> All right, let's see what the steel has to say. <laughs> Please clean this shit off me, bro. Come on. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I'm very sorry. That's not what I wanted. I wanted blood. Right. Well, maybe you will learn to behave yourself a little better if you don't want the shit bath. I feel like, you know, every relationship is two people. You know, so if you want me to come a little closer to you, maybe you could come a little closer to me and not cover me in shit. All right, quit your engine or clean you off. Travis, cast create water. Uh, much obliged, Travis. And I uh, grab a rag and I Anders dips oh, it into the yeah, 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 into the water. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Cleans the shit oh, off of the blade. Uh, just because I'm uh, steel doesn't mean I don't have feelings. Yeah, dry yeah. suit. Was this you uh, attacking Anders' spring? What? No, I was in the sheath. I didn't. I can't tell anything happening in the sheath. Can you tell now? Uh, swing me around. <laughs> All right, Andrew starts swinging the sword <laughs> around like a helicopter. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'll check, I'll check, I'll check. The sword's going to do perception check. <laughs> what if the sword can learn detecting? Oh, my God, the sword nailed his perception check. <laughs> 18 on the die. Nice. 
Ah! Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, man. Ah, I didn't see any demons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 perfect. He's just looking for demons. <laughs> oh god. Well, I guess back in you go. Ah, look at that. We are being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> but don't know where for them. Oh. Well, nothing's happened so far. I like to think that there is somebody like in the shadows that's just watching us and they just saw me fucking pull a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging around like an idiot. <laughs> Did I break his brain? Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't think it would do that. <laughs> Is he getting attacked by bees? Um, bees? It was bees? Bees? Question mark? It was a DM from your Guarian lady. Mm. She was trying to mentally send you a message. Yeah. No! Yeah. Are they. Uh, she was trying to tell you to come to a meeting spot tonight or something yeah. like that. Like, hey, do you want to watch the parade together? They're telepaths, eh? Yeah. So something's going on, but you guys don't quite know what's going on. Mm. So, unless you guys have anything else to say or do, the crowd starts arriving, and a long line is formed to watch the send-off of the Dragon Clan. Elder Griff is not among them, but Gremson Underbite, the new chieftain of Feyhaven, is leading the way. And you do see a Kimbo in the crowd, and they're all waving to the crowd. And the crowd's all, like, some of them are doing press to digitation and doing fireworks in the air, and people are cheering, and champagne corks are flying, and um, Gilly's out there trying to sell drinks. It's like, hey, everyone come to the Sly Fox after! Here's some vouchers! You see them all being sent off, and it's quite beautiful and nice to see. But, you know, Griff is staying. There's definitely some certain bodyguards staying. It's not like the entire army left Fayhaven, just a good chunk of it. And you guys know of Fablehaven, and you know there's more of an army that they'll probably join up with. And they're taking this witch problem seriously. Witch so, problem? Sorry? Witch problem? Witch? The witch, witch? Witch, witch problem. The bad witch? Which witch are you talking about? There's so many witches in the English language. Witch hag? I'll show myself up. So... The celebration happens, and is there anything else you guys want to do before kind of putting your feet up, having a dinner, adding to your tab, enjoying some fire? You don't have to do stuff. No, I think we move. It's going to be the same old routine because you want your armor tomorrow morning. Right. Okay, through the power of Pathfinder, we teleport to the next morning, the 18th of Gazran, the 11th day of the journey. Andrew's armor is ready. Um, just for all the food and drinks and lodging that you're spending at the Sly Fox, just take a gold off your thing. That's plenty. You still get a hero's discount. Betchlin, you are definitely paying full price for everything, but here you've done enough to earn a little discount. Plus, you gave him a song. And we'll see how that turns out one day. You'll be lucky if they don't charge us twice over once we're in Betchlin. Once they see me. Yeah. Once they see my face. Yeah. So Billy drops off the armor to you, Anders, and takes his 800 gold, which I'm sure you guys are keeping diligent track of. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is you guys. You guys are full health, full rest, full armor, full gear. You even know what all the gear is. So this is full plate, not plus one? Still plus one. Oh, still plus one. But it does look like a little bit weird. Like it doesn't match. Aesthetically, it looks terrible. Why doesn't it match? It it has everything you need to be the plus one armor that you wanted, mm-hmm. but it looks like he pulled it out of a pile of trash to mend it. Well, it's not the best finish I've seen, but kind of suits my character right now anyway. Yeah, it? you know, neither's your face. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Anders' face, Unca- not Mike. Yeah. Uncalled for. Well, no, it's accurate. He's a yeah. haggard man. I'm, I'm just role-playing. So... <laughs> What do you guys do? What is the plan? The blade of God can't even pierce my armor now. <laughs> these, uh, these new armors, they suit you, Anders. Yeah, with that $800 upgrade, you get another AC. So what's your total AC now? 20. Oh, that's a mighty AC. A mighty AC, I tells ye. So, the world is your oyster. Are we going to Trader's Haven? Are we going to Bechland? Are we going to Clam? Yeah, it's a what do you guys clam. Do? Oh, yeah. I want to do it. Maybe yeah. we detour and go back to Blarkstown because uh, much has changed, I believe. 
That's a long way. So <laughs> that'll be 35 days of travel. Uh, maybe we stop somewhere else on the way. <laughs> okay. Fetchlin's on the way. Anders, we must save your, your family heritage, I believe. Oi, on to Betchland, I say. Betchland ho! Yes, if you lads will follow me. It's the road to Betchland! Wagon trip! You see many squirrels. You shoot none of them. Good. I want to ford the river. Oh, shit, you lost your family. <laughs> oh, Timmy died of dysentery. <laughs> So, Betchland is a seven-day journey, and you guys begin your journey, leaving, unlike the heroes from the day before, with no crowd to wave you off, just lumbering out of the town, sword on Andrew's back. You leave Fayhaven, you cross the Moat of Thorns, you leave the properly spaced trail to the docks (laughs) that accommodates multiple wagons, and you take a boat just across the river. And now you are starting to get into terrain that is not the Adivan forest anymore. Trees start giving way to grasslands. So as you leave the forest, you see the grasslands stretch endlessly before you, a vast expanse of terrain. The sky overhead today is a muted gray, thick clouds hanging low, casting a soft, diffused light over the landscape. The air is cool and slightly damp. An overcast spring day. As you traverse the road, you notice that the grass, which ranges from knee to waist height, undulates like a sea of green waves, rippling with each passing breeze. Occasional small round hills break the monotonous flatness. Here and there, you can spot solitary trees, their branches stretching upward. Provi- oh, oh, a tree. Oh, it's a tree. A tree, guys. Providing respite for small creatures of the grasslands. I'm no longer in my favorite terrain. No. Everything's a little bit harder for you to get through now, and you do move slower than the rest of the group. So you're at a seven-day pace instead of a six-day one. We have woodland stride, don't we all? You're gonna make me look but that's that up only again? for difficult terrain. It, it yeah. doesn't change your armor speed, so we're moving at the 20-foot yeah. pace. Oh, of, it of, doesn't turn dwarves of, into humans. Both yeah, of you are slow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anders also only moves at 20-foot because yeah. he's in heavy armor. So Crick, once again, held back by his group, trying to move at 30, but everyone moves at 20. Amidst the sea of grass, you encounter a variety of small animals and insects, each adapting to their unique niche in this ecosystem. Rabbits dart among the tall blades, their soft fur camouflaging them perfectly against the verdant backdrop. Nearby, a group of ground squirrels scamper about, their bushy tails twitching with excitement as they gather food. As our heroes make their way through this tranquil grassland, they can't help but appreciate the subtle beauty of landscape. Crick, I need a will save. Millions. Eh... 19 on die for 26. 26. You feel something invasive in your mind. And you shake it off. What is this madness? Can I understand what this might be? Spellcraft or knowledge? You know something or someone is trying to cast a spell on you. But if you look around, you don't see anything. Hmm. Friends, now it's me they're trying to attack. Something in my brain. Oh, you got one of those gnome fingers, eh? The feels are into my head now. <laughs> <laughs> don't think I like these things. I don't think anybody tried to finger me. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but <laughs> stay vigilant. <laughs> I felt the tingles down there. Mm, I don't think these are the same things. Okay. So you guys travel through your first day of the journey, talking about the tingles and where you're getting them. And night comes down, and it's time to set up camp. Does anyone want to pick a camp spot with a survival check? Travis would love to. I'll roll a survival. You guys want to aid me? or? Yep, I can do that. Aid. 11, so that's, yeah, that's, yeah, an, aid. that's yeah. an aid. Barely. You got aids. Uh, so that is a total of 28. A 28. You find a small grouping of trees off the trail... That seems like a nice place to settle down for the night. I think this is a good place as any to bed down. Looks good to me. Travis will set up its camp. So how do you guys set up camp? Travis, you mind uh, conjuring up a little bit of that ale that you do? Oh, I got my spells back, Mr. Mr. Man, of course. Well, if we're setting down for the night, you know. Mr. Man. Let's uh, let's set up around the campfire. Let's uh, have a good talk. Hey, maybe, maybe Artie's got some stories, even. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard sword. <laughs> we'll see. You we'll get some. We'll do a chinwag with the sword, and if he's uh, belligerent, he, in the sheath he goes. 
Okay, so Travis is gonna create water and turn it into a drink for the boys. Leave some for Crick that's just water. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and do you guys have a tent? Yes. Do Wait. you guys have rations? Yes. Uh, yeah, I got, yeah, we got that. So. Yeah. Water skin, rations, torches, rope. All right. I don't have tent. I have bedroll and... Uh, yeah, no tent. Yeah, I have a bedroll. Also. Good, good yeah. enough. No one's got a tent? We're out under the stars. Yeah, that's fine. Just like the old days. <laughs> Trail rations. Yeah, so you guys got food. You don't need to hunt or anything. Water skin. Yeah. Does anyone know how to start a fire? Yes. I have a flint and steel. I there you go. Can. So you guys flatten out the area for your bed rolls. You start to... You start a little fire, you divvy out your travel rations, and is there anything you want to do before bed? Have a powwow with the sword? Uh, let's see what this uh, lump of shit iron has to say for itself now. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let me guess, you want some demon blood? Yes, <laughs> if we could just find some <laughs> demons, that would be super great. Like, I cannot express enough how much I just want to really kill demons. I've got the impression. Are we on the way to demons? You could say that, yes. Oh, that's really nice to hear. That's really nice to hear. Indeed. So so where are they? Oh, they're to the north, to the west. Okay, okay. As long as you promise me you'll unsheath me tomorrow, I'll stop making so much noise in my sheath. <laughs> well, I, I make no promises. Oh, okay. If you behave... And I make no promises. Well, I've already gathered that. I already gathered that. Oh, you're just gonna copy yeah, me. I'm gonna copy you. Oh, great. I've got a mimic sword. Yeah. Doesn't feel great, does it? You could just put him in sheath. No, I no, could. no, no. Don't, don't, don't listen to him. Listen, me and you, we have something going here. All right? We both want to kill demons. All right? This is the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Don't listen to them. Just listen to Artie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to Artie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good, too. 3v4. 3v1? Yeah, 3v1. You're not so good at math, are you, Artie? Can, can you detect evil on, on Crick? If he's evil, I'll do it. <laughs> can you detect evil? No, I just know demons. Oh, shit. I don't like killing innocents, though. No kids. I don't intend to kill any kids. Oh, thank God. Well, look, look, I've got a John Travolta ponytail. A... You mean, <laughs> you, what? Because he tried to stab an orphan. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I know what you're talking about Because you're the one who unsheaths That's right, you know who butters your bread, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah And we both hate demons Oh, great, well, we'll kill yeah. some demons yeah, yeah. and post haste I acquiesced your request Do you have any information? Well, uh, uh, let me think Can you be of any use? I killed the shit out of demons Like, Aside. let me tell you, give me one chance Aside from that demon's dead Okay, let me think. Let me think. The sword's going to do a knowledge check to see if he remembers anything today. <laughs> That's a one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It's a little cloudy still. Yeah, I bet it is. You just as, uh... I've been sheathed a long time. Right. Who am I to judge? Just leave me out tonight. Let me look at the stars. That sounds rather risky. What? I'm not going to walk away. I'm a fucking sword. How do I know? You make grow some legs and walk off. Oh, that'd be super cool. Maybe the sheath keeps you uh, grounded. I think you're giving me too much credit. Looks like you're giving me too much lit. Oh, pop. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's wise to leave this sword unsheathed. He's not an evil sword, You don't though. need to... He's not an evil sword. Do what sword. the sword you don't, tells him. Maybe he likes deal. to see the stars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a judge. I lit, like looking at the stars. Literally can't see. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep that on your watch, though, if you want. Yeah, but then I can't see. No, okay. but uh, we also know that the, this, this sword does not help with watching things. So right. maybe not a good idea. That's right. Does it? Do I have to be holding it to lose perception? Or if, is it just out if it's around you, you're losing the perception. It would have to be like in a different room, sealed up. So is it causing them to lose perception too when I pull it out? I am a gentle DM, <laughs> and this is your problem. <laughs> no, we have to we have to sheathe the sword. Yeah. No, you you're going into ah, the sheath. Okay, it's it's okay. to, for your own good, for your I'll own protection. See you tomorrow. I mean, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our. Okay, our, what's our watch bed? order? Oh, watch order. So it's 
12 hours, four hours each. What time is it? I'll oh. take the first watch, lads. Like Why don't you take... Let, when let when let does the, the sun set in spring? Ten. Let's let the night vision people. Oh, yeah. Good call. call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to ask what time See, this is why I don't wait for me to say what to do. That's maybe, for sure. maybe you go last. Yeah. I go first. It's okay. okay. Travis, I wake you up next. Okay, thanks, Crick. Night, Andy. Good night, Audie. Night, night. So, Crick has his watch. Wakes up Travis, and Travis has his watch. And then Travis wakes up Anders. The sword is not making a sound, and Anders has his watch. Anders, I'll need a will save, please. What's going on with these will saves? I don't like it. All right, come on now. Big money, no whammy. <laughs> uh, 17. As far as you know, nothing happened. No gnome finger tinglies. You didn't feel any gnome finger tinglies. All right. Just like Travis the first time. Well, this morning has been pretty uh, tickety-boo. And you guys set off for your second day of your adventure through the grasslands. The 19th of Gazran, 12th day of the journey. It is still overcast, basically the exact same day as the day before. Throughout your daily travels, you just encounter the odd adventurer, nod your head maybe, or get out of the way for a wagon here and there, and you keep on going until the end of the day, you have to set up camp again, a little survival for the boys. Nice. A fatty natty. <laughs> a fatty natty. 27. I don't even bother to help. I let the, let these people do their yeah. thing. I also got 27. Ooh. <laughs> so you guys look for a little camping spot, and you actually find some hot springs next to, like, a nice flat grounded area with some tree cover right by, and the hot springs, like, ringed by rocks, and it looks very inviting. Wow. I sneak up in case there's any Sheila's showering in the hot springs. Yeah. Oh, that's the only thing missing, eh? Yeah. Yeah, there's no women in the hot <laughs> Okay. If there was, it'd be a siren's trap at that point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is too good to be true. Uh, <laughs> she wants to be part of our world, guys. Yeah. And unless there's nothing else, we're going to go through this day as well. I'll take a bath. Yeah, you can definitely enjoy a nice hot bath. For sure. Greg, you're going to rest your aching bones. Like maybe I do some cutting tonight instead. Cut Normal the stuff. Yeah, don't cut yourself in the hot tub, yeah. No, I will use some of these waters to replenish the mask. Ah, uh, the okay. mask lives for another week. I put the mask against a rock, and I pray and think about all of the horrible things in this world, um, and have the ancestors speak through me and to them. Through the mask. And I'll cheers Anders. <laughs> <laughs> it cheers right back at you, Travis. Travington. Where did this name Travington come from anyway? What what land is this from? Oh, it's uh, something just <laughs> it's my mom my mom used to say. It's Claire told you. But I said my mom used to yeah. say it yeah, too. She oh. picked it. My bad, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I said that's why I said Travington is something, and then she said Travington, I like that. And I said that's what my mom used to call me. Oh. It's very sweet. Yeah kind of hear her voice still when she's calling out from the yard there <laughs> think about those times sometimes but is she a ghost yeah do you see her right now no 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 she's been gone since i was young is she one of the ancestors she one of your ancestors no yours does she speak to you oh, does no. she tell you of incoming dooms i, I don't I, I don't i don't have any connection with my ancestors like that oh. i was sort of sort of cast out even from I, I think maybe you should be listening to her more when she's speaking to you hmm Maybe I do just go to listen. I like that. If anyone knows ancestors, it's Crick. <laughs> okay, so we're going to speed things up a bit to go through these seven days. Jeez. But do let me know if there's something you guys want to be doing during this time to augment your character. Do you want to, let's say, try another prayer to a chroma? For example, is this going to be a nightly thing? Are there nightly things of note? Does Travis want to maybe try to start getting in touch with his ancestors, as Crick has suggested? We know Crick cuts himself every night, so like he's gonna, he's probably gonna smear dirt on his mask. It's been ten days, so he's got ten days until his mask dies. I'm keeping track. You really Were don't... you not paying attention she to just... about 34 seconds ago when I was saying I was doing these things? God damn it. Yep. And it's only seven days. 14 days. No, it's 14 no, days. No, you keep saying 14. It's only seven. Is it seven? It's one week. 
I like that better. And I've done this many times throughout I the journey know, so far. But it just takes one. <laughs> okay. One week. Yeah. Each day. So it takes along, me to catch it one time, and this mask is dead. Each day, a long journey. Yeah. yeah. A confederate with misc and put water in <laughs> that dirt. hardwood's turning to softwood real fast. Uh, so <laughs> let me know because I'm gonna start rapid firing. We are at the end of the second day of your seven day journey to Betchland, and we're gonna speed it up a bit. So, is there anything you guys want to do in your nighttime routines or anything of note while we travel these seven days? Because I don't want to describe seven days of traveling. <laughs> Anders will attempt to commune with his wayward god once more in an angry fashion. I guess he can't I can't really feel ignored because there hasn't been a chance to use my powers anyways. So You don't know if your powers are back. Yeah. But I'm still expecting some sort of communique. Well, it's not like... It's like when you break up with a girl and then you get back with her and she's still suspicious. And you're just like, here's one flower... You know and then what? you leave her alone for seven days, and you're like, hey, what's up? You know, she's going to need some, like, smoozing. Anders is angry. More flowers. Anders is angry a lot of the time, and he's yeah. going to mentally lash out at yeah. Chroma as he... Any communication with a Chroma is considered a commitment to that, whether you want to yell at him, scream at him. Yes. You might have some nights where you just swear at him. You might have the next night where you're like, oh, you know, I'm sorry about last night, but, like, you know, you're still pissing me off. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. You might be going through that whole routine, right? Anders, Anders remembers his lost love, loved ones and has a particularly difficult evening and yeah. mentally lashes out on Chroma. But you're still thinking about your sister and the way yes. to go about a better future, right? Because you are, at heart, a good paladin. Still walking forward. Yeah, you're just racist. So, we're going to speed it up a couple days. I'm going to need a will save but from... you were just asking what yeah. Anders, or yeah. all of us want, and only listen to Anders. Yeah. This is true. I'm a terrible listener. Go on. <laughs> Travis. Uh, Travis is going to kind of think about what Crick was talking about the first night out there, about his ancestors and his mom and everything, and maybe there is a way to kind of connect to them, because he's sort of seen the way that Crick and Anders are interacting with this sort of spirit realm, the spirit world that he didn't feel a connection to. So he's, he's going to spend his time, especially kind of through the days, thinking through things as they're walking, but more at, more at night when he has those nights alone, when he's on watch. And Travis is going to kind of just even just hum kind of some old songs that his mom used to. Some old to. dwarven songs? They are some dwarven tunes. Nice. Um, back from when they were, when he was growing up, before she died. Um, and yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll spend the time thinking about that, that connection to them. Uh, and... Yeah, because I guess she, they, his mom also instilled in him his uh, appreciation for their deity, which is uh, Gozray. Gozra? No, I think it was Gozray was the right way, wasn't it? I think it was Gozray. Yeah. That is your god, right? Yeah. Gozray? Yeah. yeah. The, the god forest. of nature. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we always had, always had that appreciation. Uh, she, she never talked much about the time before, before we came to the forest, uh, but, but I knew that we weren't always there. So to feel that connection, and especially when I'm not there, when not in the forest and not feeling that direct connection. Uh, Travis is trying to reach out with his mind a little bit uh, through his connection with uh, Ghost Ray. It's been a long time since you've been away from your family, too, so that's got to start weighing on it. You must start realizing that, like, you're not going back to them anytime soon, and especially the way you look now. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd be dead on sight if I walked in as a human. Um, for the most part, unless they knew who you were, I guess. But how, how It depends. If you're dressed like a guardian, maybe you'd be okay. Yeah, I don't think Travis can pull off the Guarian look. <laughs> <laughs> you need the grass skirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Travis is going to spend uh, most of the nights doing that. As they that travel. sounds lovely. And Crick, more cutting, more stabbing? A little bit, of course. Uh, these are things everyone should be doing every day, you see. <laughs> but also, he wishes to... Normally, it's ancestors that speak to Crick, so he just listen. But sometimes they listen back, but not usually. So he's trying to speak at them, mostly trying to talk with, see if Brother Blark, for some reasons, wants to talk again. He's kind of scared, though, you see, because Blark, very mean man um, to poor Tiny Creek. Uh, he only half brother. But also, now he dead? Now he ancestor? Something strange here. I don't know what it is, so maybe either Blark or... Or other ancestors want to talk about why Blark dead? All right. So you're going through your nights. Anders is trying to connect with Okroma. 
Travis is trying to think about his family and maybe connect with some ancestors from the past. And Crick is trying to reinvoke the visions that he felt that one night at the Sly Fox. Yes. But none of those things really happen. <laughs> okay. What happens is over the next three days, I'm going to need a will save from Travis, Crick, and Anders. 13. 24. Oh, 23 for Crick. Uh, so Crick and Anders, and same Travis. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not Travis. <laughs> okay. You guys feel like something tried to enter your mind and you look around and it's just, you just, don't know where it's coming from. You just have no idea. Even with like a top-notch perception check, you have no idea where this is coming from. You guys try to connect with your spiritual deities and ancestors. And I'm not saying this is in vain. I'm just saying that nothing has come to you in those nights. For the super nerds, I rolled a four, a three in the first two nights for random encounters. An 11. A two and a four. So it is a very uneventful journey. Does anything happen to me? Yeah, he felt. I, I, rolled, a th- I rolled a thirteen. You talked about them not feeling anything. No, they felt something. Okay. Oh, he just didn't feel it. No, you just didn't feel it. So okay. If We're you not succeed, succeed, but nothing, okay. So, it, but nothing sorry, happened to me. Just to be clear. Okay. Because I was confused. If you succeed a will save, you feel the invasion, but nothing happens, and you look around. And there's nothing there. Even with like a 30 perception, there's nothing there. If you fail the will save, which your character doesn't know, yeah. but we'll let the listeners, our beautiful listeners know, that you don't know that that happened. The spell has been done. Okay, but it didn't have any actual effect on me. Not that, that I, you feel not that or I noticed. notice. Okay, yeah. that's the part I was confused about. Okay. Yeah, yep. there's nothing that you feel or notice when this spell succeeds. And Crick knows that something is casting a spell on you guys and that you guys cannot see it, but it's not weakening you. Mm-hmm. It's not draining any strength. You don't know. You feel great the next morning. I felt it again, Crick. Yes, I, I, me as well. I don't know what this is. It's starting to become tiresome. What the hell? Your fingers again? You guys? Oh, when's my turn? No, this is not something you should be wishing for. Oh, it's not a pleasant experience. What's wrong with my head? <laughs> I don't think it's something wrong. It's, it's, it's a problem of them attacking. The sixth day of the journey to Betchland, the 25th of Gosran, the 18th day of the journey. You guys are walking up the road, and the overcast is finally cleared, and it's a nice sunny grassland day. Little grasshoppers are jumping between the long blades of grass. And you're coming up to a body lying on the ground and a smaller body over top of it. You get closer and you realize that what you are seeing is a humanoid unconscious or dead on the ground and a live child crying on top of it. Perception check immediately. The surroundings for threats and whatnot. 12. 18. Okay, Crick just doesn't care. Crick is watching small child. Okay, yeah. So you guys try to scan over the grass and look around. A little bit more difficult for Travis and Anders, but you don't see any visible threats or Jurassic Park raptors running through the grass. Uh, excuse me, small child. What is problem? <laughs> oh, yeah, my dad died. Did you kill him? No. Who killed him? A dire wolf killed him. I had a wolf. Where is this wolf? How long ago was it? He ran. He ran. I was picking flowers, and then a wolf came out of the grass and attacked him and jumped and cut his throat, and now he's dead. Uh, I wish to examine the body. How would you like to examine the body? With a heel check. All right. Perform a heel check mm. on the body. What are you doing? What are you doing to my dad, scary mask man? I see if he, I can make him okay. Oh, okay. It's okay. He's, he's a doctor. Okay, he's a weird-looking doctor. Yeah. I'd like to sense the motive of the child. Okay. (laughs) Suspicious of everyone. (laughs) 23. The 23. Come on, doppelganger mimic. uh, (laughs) Find out, yeah. With a 23, you are certain that this is a child under extreme duress who has just lost her father. Mm. Mm. 
This, uh... And no matter what Mike thinks, because Derek rolled a freaking D20, tr- or Anders believes this 1,000%. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, the child is being sincere. The threat is credible. So Anders draws the blade. Oh, <gasps> So no threat. He draws the blade. <laughs> demons! Demons! Quiet yourself. Oh, okay, okay. You have okay, a situation. Okay, just keep me unsheathed. Okay, can I do a knowledge nature on what I know about a dire wolf? Well, we got a heal check from first. first. Yes, uh, critics heal check is 22. At 22. So you examine the body, and there does appear to be razor claw marks on the neck of the father. Mm-hmm. Is he dead? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, okay. He has bled out. There's a big pool of blood, and it hit him right in the jugular, and this man is 100% gone. Well, child. Perhaps you have future in his uh, healer, because you are correct. He's very dead. I knew that he was my daddy, and he paid for everything, and now I'm alone. Hmm. Do you have other parent, or maybe other sibling? No. Then, unfortunately, you are correct. You're very alone. Ah, she just, like, goes towards Travis and hugs his leg. <laughs> Where are you from? What's your name? I'm from Bachland. Oh, okay. Can you, can you get back home by yourself? And if- by the way, you can see that they are clearly both elves. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your name? Demon I- child, you're an elf. We kill you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm Isla. Isla? <laughs> Isla. Are like there more? Island in Irish or something. <laughs> are there more of you here? It was just me. I was just taking a walk with my dad. Sure, sure. But also of your father. Where, where, where were you living? We were going to Fayhaven. From Bitchland? From Bitchland. Oh, you could search the father. I think it'd be prudent to search the father. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just check if he has ID and uh, oh, oops, money is. Yeah. No. <laughs> Elf man from Bitchland. Passport stamped. Bitchland. <laughs> Bitchland elf. Um, are there elves everywhere so in this land? Rick has been to Bitchland. And Anders has been to Betchland, and I'm sure on this journey of many days, you guys have talked a little bit about Betchland. And you know that there is a multicultural society there that allows all walks of life. There was a gnome doctor. There was a gnome doctor, <laughs> and he may be coming up. <laughs> he wants the world to know. So it's not uncommon for an elf to be in Betchland. It's not uncommon for there to be an elf in Fayhaven. Hmm. And you are on a main road. Okay, well, Isla, I think, uh, I think we might have to go after this, this wolf here. Do you know which way it went? She just kind of points to the north. Okay, and Betchland is sort of to the east, northeast? Betchland is more northeast. Okay. What do you think? Should we, should we hunt this down? Or should we get her home safe first? I believe we should take her back to Betchland so that she can be with somebody there. <laughs> oh, we can't abandon the child. You have no more family, yes? No. Well, you must come back to Bitchland, I believe. Someone can take care of you there. I hope so. Gather your father's belongings. Let's go. Okay, she starts rummaging through her father's things. and Yeah, I help her, like, grab stuff and yeah. like, hand it to her. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew smites her because she's stealing from a dead body. <laughs> yeah. Is it proper to just leave his body to rot in the middle of the path? For me, it is. What, what, what say for you? I don't think that's right. When he... Bury the body as a paladin. You want. That's the most paladin thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Right He's now. trying to make I'm right. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Right Crick's now. just like heave the bodies in a pile. <laughs> Crick's got priorities, and he yeah. wants to get things moving. He's yeah. got Crick's got the mojo going. Look, uh, you guys take the child. Oh no, I'll, I'll de- well, just take him around the bend there for a bit. I'll I'll bury the body. I'll take care of it. Yeah. And I assume I can just... Yeah, you can start digging on the ground. And Travis and Crick look towards the girl was, and she's not there anymore. Roll for initiative. We've been snookered. <laughs> <laughs> snookered. What, what, what? The hell is this bullshit? What the fuck? So what is everyone's initiative? Travis got a fatty natty for a 24. Ooh, nice. fatty natty. 16 fanders. Ooh. Yeah, Crick very fast too. He is at 21. Yeah, I'm not bad at all. Not bad at all. We are ready. We're ready to die. So as Anders pulls out, do you have a shovel? Oh, you're just going to dig it by hand? Maybe I was going to use the sword. 
<laughs> I did technically have it drawn. Either way, you are about to dig a grave for a dead body. And Crick and Travis go to reach to calm down this young girl. And the young girl is gone. Round one, Travis. Travis will do a perception check. Don't see anything, right? You don't see anything. 16. 16, you don't see any movement in the grass, and you do not know where this little girl went. Okay, I'm going to hold my action. And? Or are you just going to hold your turn, you mean? Yeah. Okay, you hold your turn. Yeah, I'm not ready in an action or anything. I'm going to wait and see if yeah, something comes or if you, quick. Yeah, you don't even. I mean, you know, the only thing that's alerted us is the girl is just missing in strange circumstances, I guess. Yeah. Like we haven't heard a creature. Or yeah, a we've entered initiative, so I'm. Well, well we know that, but. Yeah, the, the, the girl's gone, so he's looking around. I mean, yeah. He's going to wait for Crick to... And we did take a picture of the board for once, just so you know, if you want to hit the Twitter and see what our very poor map looks like. But it will give you a visual representation of what's happening. But if you don't want to do that, I understand. I wouldn't either. So what we have is just a path 10 feet wide going through grassland. Anywhere in the grassland is difficult terrain, so we have a path 10 feet wide where they found the body. They're all around the body. Anders was about to dig a hole. Little girl gone. Crick's turn. Uh, Crick, since, he, since little girl's no longer here, he look around. I try to find her. Perception. <laughs> very, very bad. Number two on the die again. Yeah, so you don't see anything that Travis didn't see. You're both just like, what the? What happened? Lit- little girl. Where have you gone? Yeah, you have no reason to believe that this is malicious, besides the fact that your DM said roll for initiative. No, I ask, little girl, where have you gone? Yeah, yeah, you did. What does she say? Nothing. Oh, I thought I might trick you. Uh, Anders, do you see where little girl go? And this will do a perception check. Mind you, while wielding the blade, uh, the verdant might. Ah! Verdant might. Ah! So my perception is a minus five. Yeah. Where's the demon? Where's the demon? I smell a demon. I know it's a demon. That little girl is a demon. That is 14. 14? You don't see a thing. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Point. Just point. You point the way. Okay, okay, okay. I'll roll one. Oh, it's a fatty natty. That's what you guys say, right? I still don't see (laughs) shit. (laughs) Round two. Crick. Or Travis, sorry. Whoa. Yeah. um, What would you guys do? Little girl, where have you gone? You call out into the endless grassland expanse, and you don't hear anything. You see a very tranquil wind blow over the tops of the reeds. Reeds are in swamp. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What should we do? Should we make for Betchland, or are we going to hang around and see what happens? She must be here. Look around. Search. Perhaps she's in grass. Isla. And yeah, Travis will start moving away a little bit on his turn. Mm -hmm. What if evil is afoot? I'm not sure I like this, lads. It's just little girl. You think she's evil? There's I don't a, think she's evil. There's always evil afoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evil everywhere. Maybe this is something to do with uh, what's been poking at our brains. Yeah. An illusion of sorts. Yeah. Anders, perhaps you could continue digging hole. Either way, this man needs to be buried, you say, yes? Just don't dig with me. <laughs> Yeah, what he did? I don't know. He's Anders is concerned for Travis's safety because he's going ahead. I'm just, no, I'm just moving. There's like nothing to worry about. Little girl was here, now she's not here. What's the problem? <laughs> well, Sword says she's evil. Sword is stupid. It yell. Yeah. It's not helpful at all. It has no eyes. It but sees it, nothing. It, is, it did say it didn't want to kill kids, but this is a kid that it does kind of want to kill. That is unusual, isn't it? How do we know? He's never killed kid. He's never killed demon. I got a feeling. He's never I killed anything. I got a anything. Really bad feeling about this. You've one. never swung these swords. Well, can you anything. help in any way, Saul? Can you detect these demons and tell us where they're coming from? Anything then? Like instead of just saying you want to kill them. Ah. You guys worry about all these things, and Crick's like going about his business as if it's no big deal. Like yeah. he's just like checking up on the guy. Like oh yeah, he's, he's still very dead. Okay, you're dead. With that, <laughs> it is the little girl's turn. Oh good. And on the little girl's turn. Ah, maybe she come back now. This is good. A couple things are going to happen. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to copy it. Some sort of corpse explosion. Oh, yeah, corpse explosion. It's just like full of like... Oh, well, that's a good idea. Let me write that down. Let me write that down. I'm not even casting defensive spells because I have no concern whatsoever. Yeah, I'm that's the way you're fairly really confident there's nothing not going on. Well, bad is that? Your case playing his character. Yep. No, I know. That's... 
small child. I know some. You passed a small sense motive. Hey, it's just an so orphan you know. Now. Your yeah. suspicion. Yeah. Yeah. Are you supposed to stab it? It's some a, sometimes a small, small orphans run away. Yeah. That's just what orphans but do. Without a trace. If anyone knows orphans, it's Crick. Yeah. 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 You didn't even get a chance to spear it. So that's. I just said it right there. It's a spirit because you would have had an attack of opportunity. <laughs> So. I was not paying attention. Mm. Plus, spear on back, I have knife in hand right now. Something evil is afoot. Nah, no. This is okay. Nothing bad happens. On the little girl's turn, a giant ant worker appears. What is an ant worker? An ant. Do you know what an ant is? I know what an ant is. A medium sized fucking ant. Like a Human size. humanoid size. You, you know how ants carry like a thousand times their yeah. strength on their back? And our worst fear is that ant would be our size? Yeah. That's what just appeared. That's your worst fear? Yeah, one one of them. And also uh, an, oh, aneurysms. aneurysms. <laughs> <laughs> Crocodiles, alligators, and aneurysms. What an ugly bastard. So around Anders, on his front side, a giant ant worker appears. And behind him, a grayish humanoid creature that seems almost like the god was going to finish him, but he's not unfinished him. He's got a narrow head, gaunt limbs, and a sinister, noseless face. Hmm. It's like a shapeshifter. And two claws go to rake your freaking face from the him. From the, from the, the him. The gray thing? From the it. The they. Natural 20. <laughs> on the first attack. Rolling to confirm the crit. How does this always happen? Oh, 13 on the confirm. So it's just normal damage. I think the third combat that started off with the natural 20. It's yeah, Anders, right? it feels like. So first claw rakes your back for 15. Oh, sorry. For 11 points of damage. Holy Ooh. shit. Are you... Second claw comes down right behind the first one. Hey, I want your pretties. Second attack misses. Your new plate armor manages to deflect the second claw right off. No problem. That really hurt, lads. We got some uh, some rough customers on our hands here. And immediately attacking you with a bite attack. 17. That is a miss. 17 misses as it tries to bite at you and you beat it away with your talking sword. <laughs> the heck is happening? <laughs> Travis's turn. Holy shit. That, does it look like the girl? Like the same size as the girl? It does not look like the girl. Okay. It looks like a medium-sized, gangly, golem-like creature. Okay, and it looks... Lord of the Rings. Okay, just in terms of the story, the look. Like, does it look kind of... Does it look wispy or waspy, or is it ghostish, or does it look, like, corporeal? Like, it, it, something... Pretty much Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Okay. <laughs> it's a creature of sorts. Yeah, a bigger um, Gollum kind of creature. Okay. I would like to try, if I can, either knowledge nature or if it's from underground, maybe knowledge engineering or dungeoneering on that creature. Uh, can I do more than a... one knowledge per turn? Nope. You can roll like, at once and then... No, I mean, for I like just have to tell game. you which one it is. Yeah. So for the Gollum-like creature, it'll be knowledge nature, please. Knowledge nature. See what I know about this thing. Uh, that is only a 10. 10 total? Yeah. Not a very knowledge guy. I don't think you get anything. So with the 10, you don't know anything about the golem-like creature. Okay, and on this same turn, am I allowed to roll? I'll give you the ant. I believe that you can roll a knowledge check on each creature on your turn. No, that's better. Um, and that's nature as well. Okay, that's a 19. A 19. So you know a giant ant worker when you see one. <laughs> Um, the things that you have to be worried about with the giant ant worker, it does have a bite attack, and with that bite attack, it can grab. And that's all you know with a 19. Watch out for the pinches on the ant there, and I don't know anything about that other little horrid creature. Okay, thank you. Good. But I'm gonna try to kill it. Get it quickly! What, what are you trying to attack here? I'm gonna shoot, because uh, I can't see across to the ant because of the people in the way. Yeah. So I'm gonna shoot straight down. I'm gonna click my heels, and I get three attacks. Oh my goodness. Wait. Rapid shot and hiss. Yeah, this is the first battle of level three, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's go. Travis with three attacks. So that means three arrows first into the tree misses. behind. Yeah, first one misses. Yeah, shocker. Uh, <laughs> second one is uh, six is within 30 feet, so 19. 19's a hit. Yes. Uh, 
Dum, dum, dum. Oh, max damage. That's going to be 10, 11 damage. Nice. 11 damage. Damn. Ah! And you hit it right in the shoulder. And now my f- next attack. No. Uh, 15. 15 is a miss. <sighs> Which was the one that slashed me? Is the gray one? Yeah. Okay. This one. Which I've now hit for right. once. It is now Crick's turn. So at least with three shots, you can land one. Yeah. Though. Yeah. yeah. One and three. Not I'll bad. take it. It's not a high enough AC. Uh, so enemies are surrounding Anders. Travis is shooting with a bow. What does Crick do? Crick begins casting spell. Uh, ah, yes, okay. I wish to use knowledge check on this gray creature. Okay. Knowledge nature. 24. Uh, 24. With a 24, you know a doppelganger when you see one. Mm. That's hilarious that Anders, the one who has never played this game, called that out immediately. <laughs> you know my monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that they are immune to charm and sleep. I see why you've put this creature against us. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it has a spell at will called Detect Thoughts. <laughs> so perhaps this creature has been following us for some time. Stupid creature. Yeah, you know them to be very sneaky and to invade small towns, to essentially be a very powerful person in the town and steal their riches. They're very mischievous. And they can hang out in a pair, solitary, or maybe even a gang. Okay. I begin casting spell. Uh, please make four to save as Crick cup hands over a face and pointing in direction of Gray Man, scream in between hands very loud. What is he scream? Just loud noise. <laughs> <laughs> so is it will save? A fortitude. Fortitude save. save. My bad. My bad. Twenty. You are the worst to hit you. 16 on the die, baby. Oh, I revealed a bit there. But that's okay. <laughs> Take three points of damage because the spell does not work very well. Ah, my ears! <laughs> Anders, quickly, take him part. Anders' turn. A crick moves back slightly. Five foot step? No. Oh, yeah, you just cast the spell and move? Yes. So you move back with Travis, and now it is just Anders surrounded by the ant and the doppelganger by the dead body, and Crick and Travis are back a little bit down the path. Anders is going to five foot adjust to the uh, one side of the body, so he's in between Travis and the doppelganger, and he is going to take a power attack swing onto uh, upon the doppelganger. All right. Uh, Verdant's might. All right, you want some demon blood, you bastard? Here you are. Oh, smite evil. I have smite evil, but... It might work on this, you don't yeah, so is there a penalty if I use it and it's not... No, no, no. Do no, I you lose it? it? No, you it just smite evil and you hope that it is evil. Our doppelganger's evil. It's a monster, I guess, right? But it seems pretty evil. You don't know. That's, you gotta play the character out. Like, sometimes it is what it is. Anders had been suspecting evil as soon as the uh, girl disappeared. He's going to attempt to smite evil first on this doppelganger. Yeah. And then he's going to power attack with Verdant's might. You get two attacks? No, smite evil. That's an enabling of Smite of evil and him. power attack. Yeah. Power attack is attack. Yeah. Smite evil's ability yeah. that goes on to attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So power attack and smite evil roll, baby. All right. So now you're going to need to know what your role is, plus your bonus, and then you say, if they're evil, it's another plus four to hit, or something like that, or whatever it is. Exactly. <laughs> That's not a good look. I'm going to tell you right now, when you look to the ceiling, and then you look down, and then you cover your face with your hand, something good did not happen. Well, it's a one on the door. Oh, jeez. Ah, I'm ready! I'm ready! Ah, and the sword just distracted you too much. And you swing and a miss, baby. And it is the doppelganger's turn. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. It happens <laughs> to the best of us. It's okay. I've been there, mate. Now you have bounce back potential. How do I know if the smite evil is good or not? You absolutely do not. I do not. Okay. You're doing the calculations. Well, I'm doing the calculation of nothing because you missed terribly. No, no. But when you're trying to attack me and when I'm attacking you. So what does the Smite Evil do for defense for you? Plus four AC. Plus four AC? Yeah. Just to make this easy, I'm going to tell you right now that doppelgangers are neutral. So that'll just make this easy for the rest of the combat. Yeah. We'll say Crick knew that. So now we knew. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We can just pretend like. No, you calculate. still use your Smite Evil. Yeah. It's fine. And the doppelganger is going to go, claw, claw. Rah, rah. I want your stuff. Ooh. 
That's a 17 on the die, so that's a hit. What's the bonus? Oh, yeah. Don't you have a bonus to AC with your Smite Evil, too? He's oh, but never mind. Oh, oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hitting over 20? Yep. That was a 17 on the die. So that is 11 damage as he scrapes you across the face. Boom. And another claw comes down. Stop being scrapes. Natty 20. Not even lying. Right there on the design. We're rolling for confirmed crit. Five on the die on the confirmed. Damn it. So that is just a normal hit. And that Last is Last time we stopped damage. to help small child. No more, no more helping children. Claw, claw. He's cheap. Lads, I am at death's door. The ant goes next, and he's not flanking, unfortunately, but he's still going to attack with his bite. They are starting to surround Anders. 15 is a miss, and he's going to go with his sting attack. Luckily, Crick is still 20 feet away and very 16. safe. 16, and I know your AC is 20, so you just feel on the back of your armor a big bite. Boom, your armor takes it. And on your back of your leg, where you just put that new armor, oh, your new greaves managed to withstand the sting attack. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> Billy. Travis's turn. Top of round four. Okay, <laughs> Travis is seeing that he hit one of those. He's going to try a triple shot again. Oh, Whoa. so second Double. round of Boots of Speed. Yeah. Yeah, and you're determined to help your boy Anders. Yeah, I see him. He's he's reeling. He's really hurt the natural one. <laughs> Uh, s- this is all on the doppelganger, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 17. 17 hit? Yes. Okay. One of two again so far. That's plus two plus three is nine damage. Nine damage. Boom. You smoke him in just above, like, the butt in the spine. Yes. Your stuff will still be mine. That's two arrows. I get my third shot. He's still up. Yeah, he's still up. That was a 16. 16 misses. Crick's turn. You unload another flurry of arrows, and you do land one yet again. All Travis needed was more arrows, really. <laughs> uh, Crick reaches into pocket and grabs new pearl. Ooh, the pearl of power! And while holding this, he recalls other spell he already hit just last round. Yeah? And screams at this creature again. Please make a will, uh, a fortitude save. I'm gonna roll this right in front of Crick. Ah, this is going to be so mean. Oh, oh, keep it in. Three. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fail. Excellent. Excellent. That's bad. So, uh, this creature takes eight points of damage. Yeah. And then also, he is dazed for one round. Oh my god. Yeah, so loud. You can see him trying to cover his ears, and then he just kind of freezes. Anders' turn. Um, Crick actually take five foot step as well and move in behind, uh, move in behind Travis. Excellent. For excellent. excellent protections. Yeah, yeah. Always being the leader, always on top of things. You're safe with me, Crick. Good, good. Anders, don't you die. Please, hurry up. Take uh, him out. How does lay on hands work again? Is it uh, like a free action? It's swift action. Swift action. So I can do it without penalty? Basically? This turn, be- you couldn't last turn, I think, because you swift action smite. Okay. Which was a swift action. This turn, I mean, I you think also it's still an it. attack of opportunity. No, it's not. No. No? No, it's just like a provoke. supernatural or. Okay, so swift action is not an attack of opportunity. So Unless that's, it's a spell. So but that is, is a spell you've spell. lost, so you can try. But, no. Oh, oh. Okay. You can, an ability. Yeah, he, he that's an ability. We you've just lost. had a big thing about calling on him when I need so him. So <laughs> is Okroma going to be there for you when you need him to be there for you? So you can try as your lay on hands ability, basically. Yeah. That's, well, if, yeah, for, yeah. And, and for and flavor too. And you don't lose yeah. a standard action and you still get your full turn. And it is a swift ability, so you can still attack and move or do a full attack action after. And is with his waning consciousness. He's thinking of Okroma. Come on, you bastard. I need you now. If we're gonna do this, let's do this. And then uh, Anders attempts to lay on hands himself. So you hold out your hands and, and you it. call the power of your god, Okroma. And, uh, and you feel a warmth in your hands. I put the hands down the front of my pants like Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> in Married with Children. I don't know, I don't know Pink. Al Bundy yeah. style. Yeah. yeah. That's the comfort spot for yeah. the hands. I just went to Biggins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and no pain. you hear yourself four. Oh, I have to roll. Uh, what is that? Sorry, a D6? Come on, kid. 
Oh, I haven't never used lay on hand. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the first three. time. That might be my fault. Isn't it Anders' fault? That's all Anders' fault. <laughs> you know, we love him. So you get 1d6. 1d6. Plus anything or just... No. Wow, this is not very good. Not yet. Next level, you'd be 2d6. <laughs> for one hit point. <laughs> so you call out Useless. for the power of a chroma. It finally comes to you. You put your hands down your pants... And you glow for one point of XP. HP. XP. Ooh. A- XP. <laughs> HP. It's going to be like that, is it, a chroma? Steak sauce. <laughs> Steak sauce. Some things you got to take the accountability for yourself. Is that a scroll of Cure Light Wounds? No, no, no. It no, does no. kind of work out because you are just re-engaging your power with a chroma, so one point makes sense. But yeah, the important part is you did feel that power back from a chroma. Well, it will provide me some small measure of comfort as I slip off into the abyss. Yeah. So I die momentarily. You So you can... If you, okay. This one's Just dazed. taking it out for a second. If you mm-hmm. go to kill the fight the other guy, this guy's currently dazed. Yeah, but he does 22 damage on me every he, freaking he turn. He's currently attack. dazed. Or one turn. Which means he's... Yeah, but he means he's not doing anything this turn, which means you don't have to worry about him this turn. You do what Anders you, would do. I can attack this guy then five for yeah, the just sure. back. Do what Anders would do. do. Yeah, exactly. You've touched yourself. Good. Yes. Now, yeah. what else? You're would really you do? good at touching yourself. Anders will. Or not very good. With the doppelganger being occupied by uh, Crick's dazing, Anders shall swing down upon the uh, ant worker uh, with uh, Verdant's might. Well, I know it's not demon blood, but for fuck's sake, hit something, will you? I'll take what I can get. Let's go. <laughs> Another sorry excuse for a swing, and it's a miss. <laughs> Again, again, again. So two on the die. And then Anders will five foot adjust backwards towards. Uh, uh, yes, on the other side of the corpse from the ant worker and getting closer to Travis and Crick. Little fellas that are away from Doppelganger. Oi. So now it's the Doppelganger's turn? Duh. Now it's the ant's turn? Uh, it's the spell, the ear piercing scream is kind of like a. Uh, from the X-Men shows, uh, the Cyclops' brother, Havoc. He's yeah. screaming, create yellow rings. And yeah, they, they go so he can still defend himself, but he's just covering his ears, and he's still hearing just, like, that awful scream from Crick's mouth. So it is the ad's turn. Oh, the mini fell over. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he can five-foot adjust, follow Anders around the dead body, and do a full-round attack. And he will start with a bite. Oh, boy. 18 on the oh die. And that's a free grab for your CMD. What's your CMD? 16. So you are grabbed in this ant's mouth as it grabs you with its pincers and it pins you to the ground. And it brings its little stinger from behind. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but you can tell me if I'm wrong. You're the rules master. Typically, if it's on like a pincer attack or something like that, you do the attack and you do your damage and do all the things, and then you get a free grab. Which is a that's the roll with the CM. So you would roll, you rolled to hit, you hit him, right? Then roll you roll, damage. Yeah, then you roll damage. Then you roll your CM. I thought my CMD is the roll. CMD is his defense. No, CMD is the roll. CMB is not the roll. roll. You would roll a separate attack because if it gives you then, if it then grants you a free grab, that's what you do. If you if it doesn't grant you a free grab, grants me a free grab. Yeah, then then if you were if plus grab. Yes, if it was just so it says plus grab. If it was just has the ability to grab, you would have to roll to grab. Yeah, but you're doing an attack that also grabs. Yes, like a plus trip. So roll your damage. So roll your damage. Yeah. So he hits you with the pincer attack, and he's going to hit you with some damage. Good, goodbye, fair Anders. Ooh, little roll. So four damage <laughs> on the melee bite. I'm conscious. Are you yeah. still conscious? No. Yeah. And you just fall <laughs> to the ground. Oh, poor Anders. Not and again. Anders is down. Travis, we must take these out quickly. It's a good thing we spent like 3,000 gold <laughs> on armor. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. It's not very intelligent creature, is it? No, it's actually the stupidest creature I've ever put against you guys. So, so even though I really want to kill Anders, <laughs> oh my god, this is the stupidest creature ever. In fact, they don't even post an intelligence for it. The intelligence is dash. Mm-hmm. So Anders falls, and the giant ant worker does what it was summoned to do. Did I say summoned? Maybe that's too much. I was thinking to was summoned anyways, but. Perhaps it go, it'll go away soon now. 
Top of round five, Travis. Travis <laughs> needs to take down this fucking doppelganger. Okay. Um, I have three boots left. May as well keep using it because got to get through it. So click my heels again. There's no place like no. <laughs> One arrow, another arrow in the tree. Uh, that's the 17. Well, that's a hit. Please just die. <laughs> Three, four damage. Four damage, and this thing takes a shot in the abdomen and takes a kneel down and steps up again, spits up some blood, and just hisses. Your items will be mine! Final attack. It is staring you down for this final attack. God, die already. That's a miss as it ducks another shot, and there's five arrows in the tree behind him. Crick's turn. There's one tree. Just I put it there just for you. Because your arrows have to hit something. Otherwise, some poor girl picking flowers in the meadow is just getting rained on right now. Okay. You can just go in perpetuity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, Anders, not bad timing. So, mm. I thought I hit him. Travis, do better. Uh, Crick look back down at hands, sees scars of bloody hand on there, and he grab ceremonial dagger and slice deep cut into his wrist, and blood start pouring out uh, while casting this spell. Please make fortitude saves for both of these creatures. All right, right in front of him. Who's that Doppelganger first? first. Crack die. Oh, Natural 20. Oh, such bullshit. It was not a crack die. All right, re-roll. Re -roll, then. I thought it was a little crack die from the second. You're the, you're, it's up to you. You tell me. Okay. Fails the first one. Doppelganger fails. 17. Okay. So, ant no effect. Yes? Yep. Uh, doppelganger takes six points of damage. From what? He ble he begins bleeding. How do you want to do this? Uh, Crick stab deep into his arm. Also takes six points of damage. And at the exact same time, on arm of a doppelganger, its blood just starts springing forth, and, and he grabs its arm, but you can see life force leaving body. I love it, but that's fucking Graves Creek. <laughs> at the same time, every arrow wound that is in the doppelganger just bursts with blood, and the doppelganger goes, No! I wanted the item! And then he just falls. Dying out and bleeding. Oh, this hurt very much. Does a summoned creature leave after the summoner dies? I think so. I believe if so. they fall unconscious, I actually don't know that. You know better. Rules you, I you thought played, uh... so. Yeah, it didn't come up though. Oh, because I didn't never die. Died. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought from GCP they do, when they go unconscious, they disappear. They last. They keep going until end of duration of spill. All right. So even though the doppelganger's down. The summoned creature stays, and that's what this ant is. The doppelganger went invisible to summon the ant, and you still have to deal with the ant. It is Anders' turn. Anders, roll to stabilize, unless Crick wants to five-foot adjust or do something different. Travis, you're doing great work. He takes five-foot step backwards. Oh, Come smash good, his Good butt. leadership, good leadership. Uh, Anders, roll to stabilize. <laughs> what are you minus right now? I'm minus two, and I've rolled a 14. All right, you got it. Oh, I'm stable. You're no longer <laughs> dying on <laughs> <and> bleeding. <laughs> Doppelganger's turn. He'll roll to stabilize. He stabilizes. Actually, he's bleeding. Oh, yeah. So Damage over what time. Stabilize does. Because this is actually a thing. S yes. If he's just bleeding from regular dying, yeah. he would stabilize. But right now, he is bleeding. Okay. So what is the bleed damage per turn? D6. D6. So we'll see. So he take this damage. Then he can try to roll to stabilize. I don't think that's going to happen. Oof. And once again, outside of the arrow wounds, another anime version of gushing blood comes out. And you can tell that that doppelganger is gone forever. It is the ant's turn, who is just a mindless drone summoned for death, and he will continue this pursuit. <laughs> Travis, yeah. this five foot step towards Travis. Steal yourself, just defense. You don't need to heal this thing, it will go away in time. I'm gonna dodge. Look at this. Do, 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 do. And it's starting with his bite attack. Six on the die, that's a miss. Goes for its sting. I don't think the sting hit, if I'm being honest. Thir oh, sorry, 16. Ah, oh, that just hits. 16 just hits? Yeah. Hell yeah. So we're gonna do a D4 plus poison. Mm -hmm. So D4 for the poison. So you take three damage. Uh, yeah. Plus, 
I'm going to need a fortitude save, please. Mm. 11. 11. So you fail. Or sorry, what is your hit dice plus your con modifier? Hit dice plus con be 5. 5? You pass. Because it's 11 plus 5, 16. Right? There's a DC. It says DC plus half the poison creature's racial HD plus con modifier. That's the DC. DC is half. Is what? Say it again. DC 10 plus half the poisoning creature's racial poisoning HD. Poisoning creature? Yeah. yeah. That's you. Oh. Oh. That's yeah, why sorry. it was strange yeah. that you're asking yeah. his numbers because it's usually yeah. based off of the strength of the poison of the creature. So. Yeah. So you fail. Yes. For D4 con poison. Uh, yeah. Four on the <laughs> D4. <laughs> So the next four rounds, you'll lose one D4 con. So it's kind of a big deal. Sorry, so that roll was for the number of rounds or the number of damage? Sting injury, fortitude save, DC 22. Frequency one round for six rounds, effect one D4 con round. Oh, so that's rounds. Frequency is once for six okay. rounds. Okay, okay. But I get a new save probably each round. Sorry. No, no, no. So that was four con for one round. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, sorry. So with the poison, I rolled a four on the D4. So for one round, you will lose four con. Okay. Ouch, this is very mean creature. That's a very bad poison. So you are feeling very sickly right now. You got bumps and scratches all over you. And yeah, it doesn't feel great to feel a human-sized ant sting you. It is now Travis's turn. Okay, just so we have it right, we don't have to keep it in there, but so when I go minus four con right now, that's minus four hit points. Minus two hit points per level. Okay, so minus six. Minus six effective, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it'll just be this round. Yeah. Yeah. Does the health come back? It's temporary. Like, whereas, uh, like, the drain is last days and stuff like that, or forever, but you can heal like one a day. I mean, like, he day. wouldn't be, like, at 26 out of 31 once his health returns. Correct. Yeah, once he gets it back. It's proportional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So Travis doesn't like this ant here. He hates his own ants at home. And he's going to five foot adjust back and just do a regular rapid shot on this ant here. Yeah, it's just two shots? Regular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for a full attack action, I can do two shots as a rapid shot. Yeah. But it's minus two to each of those You don't want to use your boots? So that, not this time, no. All right. I have two uses of it left, so I want to keep those in case we need to run away from something. Or All right. This thing comes back. Uh, so plus four, so 21. 21 hits. Three is seven. Seven damage. You smoke it right into this little ant abdomen. And it's still alive and kicking. Okay, second of rapid shots. 18. Because point blank shot. 18 hits. Okay. And plus three is eight more damage. Eight more damage. And you shoot it again in the same spot. And it's going. But it's still going. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, Crick, now he does not concentrate on spell. He ends spell. He does not want to bleed more, so he does not. Taking five foot step, pulls out long spear. Oh, we know this long spear very well. <laughs> Standing beside Travis, he level spear towards stupid ant and plunge forward. Yeah. Not as epic as last time. <laughs> its AC is not that great. Mm, Neither is great. I roll nine on die, so ten. Ten is a miss. <laughs> so it dodges to the side and it misses your spear thrust. It is the ant's turn. Five foot step towards Travis. These ants still here, huh? Eh? Dang. It's going for its bite. Natural one going for the sting. Crack die. Four, one and a four. It misses with the stinger. It misses with the bite as Travis jukes and jives out of the way. And it is Travis's turn. Top of round seven. This ant is not looking great. Yeah. Um, let's do another rapid shot again. We're going <laughs> to. Yeah, five foot step away rapid shot. Let's do it. Travis special. Uh, that's 16. Hits. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Travis. Nine damage. How do you want to do this? <laughs> He's been picking it off, and I, I know ants because the insects, they have the three parts, hit one in each part. So yeah. one in the thorax, one in like the abdomen, and one yeah. in the sternum. Sure. And then like whatever that, the last one's right in the head. Yeah. It's going for that Between bite. the eyes? Yeah. It's yeah. Got, that, got With that, those claws coming mandibles. at you? Yeah. 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 It's right in there. Yeah. 
I'm getting good at hitting the mouse. And you nail it, and its mindless face collapses to the ground as a little dust cloud comes up, and the combat is over. <laughs> Excellent work, Travis. So, as soon as Ant drop to ground, Crick, take a moment, slowly put Spear away, dust off nice silky robes, uh, take time and slowly walk towards Anders. Anders in, in, in heap on ground, but this is normal thing for Anders now. Yeah. So, you look at him, hmm, I think I have thing for you here, and he's slowly wait, taking time and casting spells. Uh... I do cure light wounds for seven health. Are you conscious? <coughs> God, not again. <laughs> you and that sword got to get on the same page there, mate. Oh, I got to get on the same page with all sorts of things. Anders, it's okay. You did quite well. Uh, maybe next time don't fall to ground so badly, but otherwise you protected Crick. And this is number one job. Yeah. Is that poison gone? <laughs> Am I still feeling that? No, he's gone. One round, right? Yeah, it was just round one round of poison. And uh, okay. I think to cure it, you just need a regular cure spell. I also bring out wand and tape on Enders for another seven points of healing. Oh, thank you. Perhaps one more? Uh, I am still... Four rather... more after that. All right, I'm looking like uh, I'm about halfway. <laughs> Whoa. Four more. <laughs> And then eat. All oh, right. That's uh, feeling uh, not too bad. Eh? Well, you need the uh, neutralized poison to neutralize that effect. So you are still poisoned with the con damage until you neutralize the poison. Didn't you say it only lasts a few rounds? Well, I said it was only one round of poison. So it wasn't two rounds of the con drain. It but was one round of the con drain. And you are still affected by that because you need to detec- detoxify any sort of venom that the creature or object touched. Are you sure? That's what it says right here. Okay. Tell me I gotta suck the poison again. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to find a healer in town. It's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, I wish to see what Doppelganger has. It was looking for our things, but maybe it has things. Good, good call. So yeah. you go to look at the Doppelganger and you see those two big claws that you could easily mistake for a dire wolf's claws. Mm. And it makes you wonder, did they just kill this person to set up this whole thing? You knew from your knowledge check that it had the detect thought spell, mm-hmm. which is you knew that something was trying to invade your mind this whole time. Yes. It wanted your items, so maybe it had followed you all the way from Elder Griff's vault through the days, waiting for its time to steal these items from you. And it could have been anything. This doppelganger could have literally been anything. Even it could a have boat. Been a, even a boat. <laughs> it could have been an owl following, following you around. That's why you can never see it. It could have been a person in town Trying to do these things to you. It's what doppelgangers do. It's like when Odo turned into the chair to spy on the people in the Deep Space Nine. Yeah, exactly like that. On the doppelganger, you find a rod of invisibility with three charges and a rod of summon monster two with three charges. That could be good. I always loved summon monster in the Baldur's Gate. It's very powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like to then check out the supposedly dead dad. Good idea, since he's not just this creature's father. <laughs> Anders is going to take his blade, Verdant's might, and he's going to sever the head of the doppelganger. And, uh, co- yeah, let's go! <laughs> I told you we'd get some blood. Yeah, it's a demon, kind of. I'll take it. Next time, let's try to do it while it's alive, huh? Uh, well, it's kind of a, you know, every problem is two people. So, you know, we'll just say it's a wash. I'm chalking that one up to you. Okay. Chop! <laughs> say it! Oh, yeah, so I chop the head off. Yeah! <laughs> I'm covered in blood, baby! And you chop off the doppelganger's head. <laughs> and it's just, oh, yeah. That's just the good stuff. It's like the good, oh, I'm getting, whoa. Guys, whoa, calm down, calm down, quiet, quiet. I think I'm getting something. I think I used to do this all the time. <laughs> you yeah, don't say. Yeah, I used to do this all the time. Oh, that felt good. Okay, I'll keep quiet for a bit. 
I don't know if a sword could have a boner, but I think he's got one. Oh, it's, my <laughs> hilt is a little stronger. <laughs> Andrews feels the girth of the hilt increase yeah. in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> There's a strange pulsing <laughs> to it. The girth intensifies. Yeah. Yes. That's why you couldn't hit. You didn't yeah. have the right girth in there. Yeah, it was just like a wet noodle. <laughs> so on the dead elf, you find nothing of like importance, 11 silver, 6 copper, and you find a note. He's got also a dagger if you guys want to take like a simple dagger and traveling clothes. And he's got a note on him, and he was actually going to Fayhaven with a note that says, Giants attacking Beshland, please help. And we'll see you next week. Oh, oh. Dang. Dang. notes. Okay. I'll find a giant now, Jesus. Maybe he's a friendly giant. Mm-hmm. So, clearly, one that's attacking Beshland is a well, friendly giant. Beshland's kind of jerks. I mean, you know, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as you remember it. <laughs> yeah. They kind of cast me away into a dank shack in the woods. Yeah. I'm going to assume that you did this wrong, but not on purpose, unless for some reason the the doppelganger has some sort of strange ability that I don't know about. But I assume it cast Summon Monster 2 and created that ant, right? Yeah. So probably it shouldn't have lasted any more than three total rounds, because it's cast by a level three spellcaster from a wand, because it's minimum caster from the wand. Doppelgangers have special proficiency. That change... Rods? Yeah, two? they can use any spell trigger or spell completion item as if the spells were on a spell list. Its caster level is equal to its racial hit dice. Mm, that's cool. There you go. So yeah. that's why. That's yeah. why I was saying yeah. unless it's a specific difference. Yeah, thing. It's a, okay. it was a very specific thing that I've actually researched. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, all good. That's yeah. why I was just like, this yeah. This should be that's gone That's why it right seemed now. out of character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, like, and then we found out. I what, wanted that, that second it, invis. So bad for another summon monster. I just did not expect how much damage Travis would do, to be honest. And that's what happened. Welcome to Brother Ripoff's Miracle Ministry. Skeeter Ripoff has founded his own church based upon the wondrous miracles and teachings that the Lord Okrama has to offer. Hi folks, Skeeter Ripoff in the house. I'm here to deliver a most holy message from our Lord Okrama, and it's about our miracle spring water. I have a special guest here today that you may all be familiar with. Anders, why don't you come up here and regale us with a few stories about some of Lord Okrama's miracles? You what? Excuse me. You brought me down here to sample some sort of new booze, not to stand on a stage and faff about some sort of blooded water. Please, Anders, just play along. The bloody fuck am I going to do with this? Just drink it and show off your muscles a bit, you damned idiot. And since when did you fall in with Okrama? He was just a traveling merchant a fortnight ago. Now, now, Anders, let's try to tone down the blue collar talk a bit here, okay? Fuck and you should know, invested. I've always had Okrama in my heart. That's right, folks. And you can, too. Just send a small motivational fee to our church in Betchland, and we will get you enrolled into our holy system of miracle healing and debt cancellation. Once that small bit of gold is in my hands, a welcome package, including some literature and one flask of Brother Ripov's Miracle Spring Water, will be sent your way. Now, this isn't your grandpappy's Miracle Healing Water, no. This is a new formula, straight from Okrama himself, with double the miraculous healing properties. (sighs) What a load of bullets. Not only that, but the Lord Okrama will be walking alongside you every day. And to keep them there, all you gotta do is just keep on sending small monthly donations to our church. Now, Anders, would you be so kind as to have a drink of our Miracle Spring Water and demonstrate your holy powers to these fine folks gathered here? I'll be damned if I'll drink that piss. I've got better shite to do than help you peddle this nonsense. Don't bother me again until you have some proper booze, little man. Anders, please, stick to the script. Don't fuck this up, you ingrate. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. Don't you walk away from me. And he's gone. All right, folks. uh, Bit of a change of plans here. This scam, I mean sermon, will need to be paused for now. I'll leave you with a quick reading from the Book of Divine Benefaction. Chapter 20, verse 15, titled The Graces of Sacrificial Gifts. Yea, sacrifice with a willing heart. For gifts offered willingly 
set souls apart. Sow seeds of sacrifice in the sacred ground. In the church's sanctuary, graces unbound. Whew, that sure gets me fired up, folks. I bet it makes you all want to turn out your filthy little pockets and send me whatever coins or maybe family heirlooms or magical artifacts that you may have. So come see me at one of my next services. With the power of Okrama, I'll heal up your ailments, cure any disease. Hell, I can even remove any concerning warts you may have on your ghoulies. To join Brother Ripoff's miracle ministry, please send 100 gold coins to Skeeter Ripoff at 142 Church Springs Lane in Betchland. Brother Ripoff's Miracle Spring Water healing and debt cancellation results are not typical. Brother Ripoff's Miracle Ministry is not responsible for any hair loss, flesh rot, curses, or general harm that may occur after consuming this product for entertainment purposes only.